Welcome to the Quest for Speed, the ultimate cycling show where you follow my journey as a high-level amateur cyclist to become faster. As the preseason begins, every detail needs to be dialed in for an optimal racing season. With the help of several experts that work closely with the cycling world, I will share all my learnings with you guys through five episodes. Strap your helmets and get ready to join me on this thrilling knowledge ride. My name is Charles Womet and this is the Quest for Speed. If you want to go fast, the first is you need to do all your training yeah. and you need not to be injured. Not every cyclist coming in clinic has this hip flexibility. That would be your biggest easy win. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The truth is with studies, we now know that your, your knee must be slightly bent. That can really help them alleviate the numbness in the genital area. This is less expensive to be comfortable with having a bike that looks like that for a couple of rides in order to make the right choice when you want to go with integrated cockpit. I agree. As much as I wanted to try a new saddle, I kind of feel like this part is a little bit too sharp for me. All right, guys, we are now at Physio Velo. So this place is where I'm going to get my bike fit. The bike fit is something very important for any cyclist to get comfort and performance. For me, uh, this is totally a brand new bike. I've never ridden a felt before. So before building it, actually, before putting the hydraulic cables in, before the whole integrated cockpit, the first step to do is get a bike fit. So let's go meet Guillaume. He's probably one of the best bike fitter in town. Salut Guillaume. Hey Charles, comment ça va? Ça va bien toi? Yes. Super mon bike. Nouveau sponsor. New sponsor. Oh, tu peux enlever tes bottes chez moi. Guillaume. Charles, thank you so much for having me. I'm very happy to have you here today for it's, your bike fit. It is my third time at Physio Velo, actually. Today, I'm very excited because it's a it's new bike day. Yes. We have a base of a bike, but it's kind of a challenge to get this bike fit. So that's why I decided to come to you and for your help and your expertise to share with everyone. Yes, thanks for that. I think we'll have a, a nice bike fit session. We already have your, your quote from last time, yeah. so we can start with that. But uh, first, we will reassess your flexibility, strength uh, on uh, the physiotherapy side of the assessment. Yeah. And then we'll come on the bike for the bike fit session. And how does the fit will change from one bike brand to the other? Your leg length must have stayed the same. Yes. So there's some change uh, for sure between bikes, but mostly uh, there will be change considering the new geometry of the bike, so the C2 bengal, L2 bengal, and mostly we will adjust your bike fit probably very close to what it was Got it. on the other bike. As long as you stay the same, your goals yes. stay the same yes. to be on top of it. Yes. <laughs> First, we want to assess how your spine flex when you do the movement of touching your toe. So you can go with that. So as you can see with Charles, with Charles, uh, you can let your uh, head down. One of the things we want to assess is where does it bend? As we can see, the spine of Charles is really uh, bending all the way through. Sometimes we see like less uh, flexion in the lumbar spine, but here it's very good. Good job, Charles. Yes. Small wins. For a cyclist to be able to bend on his bike and have a very aggressive position, he must tolerate it. You're on a quest for speed. Quest for speed. Am That's, I correct? I am correct. This so is... If you want to go fast, the first is you need to do all your training yep. and you need not to be injured. Yep. So this is really one of the first goal. Not to be injured. Bike while, yes. <laughs> so you can do all your training because really the gains are in training yes. and in recovery. True. So my job is just to allow you to train, to recover and it's up to you to yeah. win the race. <laughs> it's up to me. I can't blame you if I don't win the race, right? No, you cannot. <laughs> Guillaume then did a full body assessment looking at the flexibility of my ankles, of my knees, of my hip, just to make sure that I was going to be able to hold the position that he had in mind for me. Because this range of movement, you can see right here in Charles' hip, is very good. Not every cyclist coming in clinic has this uh, flexibility. hip flexibility. Having a strong and healthy hip also help you with your low back pain. People who have a low back pain, usually they have a hip dysfunction. Got it. So it's really one of the things that you must take care of while you do your stretch. So as you can see here, we have 
if your knee is fully extended, we have mostly like 80 degrees. This is really good. You can try at home, over 70 degrees, it's really good. That can mean that you will be able to have a hero position on the bike as long as your spine is bending toward the lumbar and thoracic uh, spine. But this is really an important test to assess if the hamstrings have the flexibility to be able to bend in a very aggressive position. So that's why this test is important. And this is also something you can do uh, in uh, complementary to the test of touching your toes. Got it. I then asked Guillaume, what could be the great improvement and what should I be working on over the next few weeks to get ready for the racing season? And Guillaume had some great tips for me. For you, your, your, your low hanging fruit would be to assess like something like a pal of press with a elastic band and mostly something with your leg being at the opposite direction, like a lunge, a, a, lunge, a squat lunge, and depending on where you are yep. in your progression of strength, that would be your biggest, biggest. Easy win. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Great. So now let's uh, hop on the bike. That's yes. where we are now. Oh. So, first time I'm hopping on the felt. <laughs> I literally take it out of the box last night. Yeah, it's a kind of kind of a bit higher. A little bit higher. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm, I'm definitely rocking too much. You can see. What's the percentage of people coming to the clinic with yeah. a saddle too high? Yeah. So having a saddle that is way too high or a little too high is the biggest problem we see in bike fitting every day. So here you see the leg of Charles, which is fully extended at the knee. I think in the history of cycling, it was a myth that uh, goes through time that you need to have your leg fully extended in order to be able to push. But the truth is with studies, we now know that your, your knee must be slightly bent uh, in between like 30 to 40 degrees of residual angle while you are doing your uh, cycling biomechanics. The question you must have is, how can I know if my saddle is too high? First, you can have pain uh, in the center line, uh, genital, and you can also have a problem with, this, with the stability on the saddle. It can be an issue that you will find if you have a saddle that is too high. Knee is around 32 degrees of residual angle. We will continue to lower your, your saddle right now, mostly because your knee angle is at 32 degrees, but your, you see your ankle? If your, your ankle is looking like this at the bottom, uh, that means that your saddle is still too high. I really felt that my saddle was too low, but I decided to trust Guillaume's experience and try it out. So now that we have done the, something close to your saddle height, we will assess the knee uh, over pedal spindle. You tried recently to move your saddle backward mm -hmm. in order to uh, be in another position from what you've known for a couple of years that was really in front of the bike with a criterion position. Yep. So right now your knee is really behind the pedal. When we use the measure of knee over pedal spindle, the cups, uh, usually we, we have some tendency to be able to be knee over pedal. But as you demonstrate in your trials and errors, you're still comfortable with the knee behind pedal. It's no problem for you. Okay, you can pedal, please. How does your saddle pressure feel under? A lot of pressure right up to the balls. There's a lot of pressure. I would say so. Yeah. yeah. Right now you, you, you told me two things, like you're rocking right uh, and left on your bike and you have some genital pressure in the- At the moment, yeah. At the moment. But you also find that your saddle is a bit lower than what you, you've known before. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, those information, they are like in a position because your saddle is probably uh, still a bit too high or still a bit too much backward. Yep. So what I would do first, because I know that your saddle height is something you already consider a bit low, mm -hmm. I would like to move your saddle forward, okay. which will uh, hopefully ease your pressure on the saddle area, okay? Ah, wait, that's in here. <laughs> this guy is smart and then he's happy. <laughs> At this point, I was feeling some pain right behind the leg to the bottom of the saddle, and I just notified Guillaume. C'est comme à l'arrière de la scène un peu. C'était juste la forme, on dirait que on dirait j'accroche le le coin. Step, ok, vas-y non, pédale. À droite, ça. Nice. So here we have 33 degrees of residual angle at your knee, and your your pedal is flat. So in 
comparison to what you had with the plantar flexion like this. Now you're pushing flat on the pedal. That means that we are getting closer to your ideal uh, saddle height and setback. For all of you cyclists at home, you can do this test. Uh, so you can pedal without your hands, just standing straight up like this. And if Charles would be sliding forward uh, on a slide, it would be a bad position because all, the, all your weight would have the tendency to go on the cockpit. You can do uh, text messaging while uh, Instagramming his life on the bike. Mm. So, <laughs> no, but I mean, can you pedal with your pelvis stable on the saddle without your hands, without having the sensation of sliding forward? So if you're sliding forward, that means the tilt is too much. The tilt is too much. And usually the, the thing with the tilt is too much is because people have some uh, numbness in the genitals area. So they want to alleviate the genital numbness, which is which is normal. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is that the saddle is probably too high. So what they, they must do is stay stable on the saddle and try a lower saddle height, maybe just a couple of millimeters. That can really help them alleviate the numbness in the genital area. Right. You have good flexibility. Yeah. Uh, we said that your low-hanging fruit would be to assess more, uh, address more your uh, trunk capabilities of uh, anti-rotation. But I think you have way enough flexibility to uh, to have a big well, drop. Right. <laughs> this is a compact geometry handlebar, and these are very, very ergonomic for like 99% of cyclists, amateur cyclists. The other thing is you probably like the flat part on top, which is very comfortable for long ascent, yeah. as you will do in Europe in the next year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will. But for my first feeling, it's uh, right now I'm a bit, far. it's a bit too far. It's a bit That's too far. That's my first feeling. Good. If I, 90 degrees arm, yeah. something I You would I like, like it to be closer? I would. I feel like I would like bit. to be closer. Okay, perfect. So I could hang a longer time. So first, before deciding which uh, stem length we will use, I will just put your, uh, your uh, hood just in a slightly upward position, okay. just to have a nice continuity with the, the handlebar. And then we can address. Some bikers don't like that. Yes. Well, I like oh, the yes, hood you like a, bit, a little bit angle in. Um, usually it's to have the wrist on the flat part of the bar and then the ends on the inside. There's always a downside to this position, which is when you will be uh, climbing on top, it's, it's not best for your wrist, but as we are in the Montreal area, it's pretty flat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're always like this on the hood. So that's why probably you, you, you will have like 80% of the time in this position. That's why you, you, li you, like, you like this position. That feels the good. Also, right away, I, I feel less of the need of having a shorter stem because it's a bit like, it's, because it got closer. Before choosing the stem, you, you, you told me you have some stem in the bag. The thing is, first you need to assess the cockpit in the right position. Yeah. And then because the, the, the hood comes towards you when I was putting them uh, more inward and more upward, that's why probably the difference is probably a stem of 10 millimeters. So that's why I, when you told me that, I was like, oh, wait until we Got place it. the hood at the, the right, right place. place. And then it should probably, because right now what you see here, is a 90 degree elbow. So this is really easy for human beings to stabilize the elbow when it's at 90 degrees with your, with your uh, shoulder blade. Moi, je pense que tu parles un peu de football. Ouais. Ouais, c'est un peu. Tu trouves égal? So great news, guys. We can slam this down. <laughs> Just kidding. We can go a little bit lower. Yeah, a we, little can, bit we can go a bit lower. So at this point, guys, you're probably wondering why am I riding this regular stem and not the fully integrated stem that comes with the Felt AR bike? Well, the reason is simple is I want to be able to change my position over the course of the next few weeks and months easily. I want to be able to change the height of the stem, the length of the stem, despite the fact that I'm having a professional bike fit here Whenever I'm gonna get back out on the road, maybe the fit will be not just right. So here, I'm just wanna let myself all of the flexibility possible for me to be able to get the best fit possible. Just for you to know, guys, this guy is smart. This is the smartest thing I've heard in a while. For the takeaway message, it's really, this is less expensive to be uh, comfortable with having a bike that looks like that for a couple of rides in order to make the right choice when you want to go with integrated cockpit. I agree. 
As much as I wanted to try a new saddle, I kind of feel like this part is a little bit too sharp for me. The flare here is, is softer on this one. This one, as we can see, is more tapered. So this can cause some issue on the lateral side. And this is what you just experiment. So maybe something that goes uh, uh, smoother. smoother flare uh, was helping you having a more comfortable position. Mm -hmm. So we'll test this one. So really choosing the right saddle and putting the saddle at the right position is I would say 95% of my job every day because as long as you're comfortable and stable on the saddle, the rest of the bike fit is quite easy. Here I'm glad that I asked Guillaume about this saddle change because the geometry of the saddle, despite the fact that it looks quite similar, is different on the rails of the bike. So here Guillaume was able to put the new Pro Stealth exactly where it needed to be. Oh, oh feels like back home. Feels at home with the saddle. Usually that's what uh, cyclists says, say when they, they get back on a good saddle. If the saddle height is too high, any saddle can be very discomforting. Here Guillaume asked me to do some interval and put the power down and I gotta say, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling fast. Oh, that feels good. Right. Guillaume finished the bike fitting, making sure that he had all the measurements in his database so he can come back to it later. Here he was just taking videos of me from the front, from the side, and then using measuring tape, making sure that I know all the exact measurement of my bike. So Guillaume, this bike fit has been a blast. I think I've changed quite a few things, right? Yes. Uh, most important of all, I think you decided to stick with the same saddle mm -hmm. that you love for quite a while. And I think it's a wise decision because there's no reason really to endure some discomfort on the saddle yes. for no one. As we saw in the assessment table, yes. I do have a lack of stability around the hips. Yes, if you ask me to find some weakness, weakness. because you're not injured, there's some low hanging fruit for you. Uh, to work on this st stabilization. The glute uh, are really important. They are really strong, but uh, you need them to work in order to be able to be stable on the saddle. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you were rocking right, left on the saddle, and this may be because your saddle was a bit high, but this can also be caused by a lack of a motor control of your trunk yeah. and uh, glute activation, as they call it. Got it. <laughs> uh, first of all, you need some time to adjust to let to the your, new one. To your body adapt to the new bike fit. Usually we ask for like 10 to 20 hours of riding. Sure. And it's really important when you come out of a bike fit session that you don't go do an FTP test. Yeah, and you don't do some very high intensity stuff that your body is not worked, uh, is not used to. And the thing is probably that you're gonna try the bike fit right now on indoor trainer. Yes. Riding inside compared to riding outside, there can be quite a lot of difference. It's important for you to let your time on the bike adapt uh, while you ride outside. And if there's any discomfort, uh, you can reach to us. This is usually what we say to clients. If, they, if they have a problem, yeah, they can come back, but sometimes it's, it's very easy for us to just give an advice uh, by email or by phone. Great, well, Guillaume, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for being part of it, as always. Thank you for uh, your loyalty. Oh, <laughs> you know, I, you're, you're my favorite bike fitter. I gotta, <laughs> I, I've gotta admit it. Because Guillaume also runs a YouTube channel, so if you guys haven't seen it yet, uh, it's mostly in French, but mostly there's no French. more English content coming out yeah, on, for sure. it's a big on the push channel. For us. So <laughs> definitely check it out. Link will be in the description down below, and I will, uh, I will see you soon, Guillaume. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sean. Thanks. Most people will say, yeah, a clean bike is a fast bike. And like, I strongly disagree with that. <laughs> Why would you remove the fork, Charles? Cut this straight on the bike. the bike on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would give myself a rating of a 7.5 out of 10 as a home bike mechanic. And this goes, like, it really goes against whatever Shimano and Strauss says in terms of the chain length.